by uh, some policy like uh, to reframing the uh, spectrum and the switch off legacy network. And we also do study and uh, make a technical guide for 5G. We also do uh, uh, manufacture device and uh, network equipment of 5G uh, locally in Vietnam. And we also have some uh, program to uh, promote the smartphone production like uh, US the municipal service program and so on. And the, the final one is to try to, to, uh, to make the um, other temple sit together and find out a way to facilitate uh, infrastructure training. So this is the uh, two um, main topic uh, and update from uh, BNCA we do recently. Next, I would like to uh, give us some breath about our telecom market. So we have some uh, over 100 uh, um, telco and internet provider in Vietnam. As we see here, uh, mostly we have uh, recently we have the five uh, mobile telecom operator like PNBT, mobile phone, uh, Vietel, Vietel uh, and ATC. Here is some uh, statistic uh, update uh, recently uh, last uh, last month. As we see here, we have uh, over 17% of internet penetration is uh, pretty much high uh, compared with the Indo-ASEAN region and uh, ASEAN too. The final year for our approach so for cooperation, uh, we have uh, now under some study to uh, some um, topic uh, like the first one is the, to promote the consumption of the mobile data service. Uh, second is we try to find out a way to, uh, to manage uh, the revenue sharing between uh, Tenco and CB is pretty much we have some difficult situation here. And um, we also uh, have another study to implement 5G, including sharing infrastructure, manufacturing uh, 5G device and network equipment, and especially uh, the open RAN implementation. Uh, and we also heard that uh, in Russia, we, you have a uh, nation, uh, national digital economy program that implement 5G in the 10 city by the end of next year and to own city by the end of the 2024. Uh, and we would like to, to, to seek to, for your experience and some uh, advice from Brussels to, to implement this program. And we also think that we have, may have us to, to implement our tool. So that is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Bin. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Bin. Um, yeah, it's a good observation. I even did some screenshots for several slides. Thank you. Let's go further. Uh, our next speaker from Russian side, Alexei Zhurba, uh, is investment director of ESM Group. He will talk about independent mobile operational system in today's digital ecosystem. Uh, and we will see the case, how it might be potentially international goof. Um, yeah, it's called Selfish, as you see, or Aurora. Uh, please, Alex, go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you so much Ivan, for kind of introduction. Uh, my greetings to the colleagues from Vietnam and from Russia. 
So as Junat said, uh, <clears throat> I represent the SN Group, the company that invested and developed two operating mobile uh, mobile operating systems, Selfish and Aurora. And I'd like you, I'd like to tell you a little bit about those. Oh, just a sec. Do you see my screen fine? Yes. Yes, you can. All right. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so um, the origins of uh, technology come from Nokia, and uh, Nokia, together with their partners, spent about 1 billion euros in development of their own operating system. However, you probably know the, the history. Nokia was acquired by Microsoft at some, at some point. And so the project was halted because Microsoft naturally opted for Windows uh, operating system. Now, the technology was spun out and the development was continued by a separate company called Yola, in which we invested back in 2015. So what we did, we took what uh, we took selfish operating system that was developed by Yola. We brought it on Russian soil and uh, continued the development in Russia, rebranding the system as Aurora. Then we um, invited Ross Telecom as an infrastructure partner in uh, 2018. And together with Ross Telecom, we pretty much propelled the project uh, together with the uh, together with the government support that we received in Russia and with investments that we received from Ross Telecom, as long as the, uh, together with their market power, we basically propelled the project into the very, very um, strong corporate and uh, government market. So what is um, Aurora OS today? So basically the open mobile platform, the company that develops Aurora, also develops all sorts of products and services that come together with Aurora. <clears throat> there is a trusted execution environment, there is cloud infrastructure, and there is a booming ecosystem developing uh, around this operating system, which includes the devices and the apps. Overall, I think we have about 19 partners that contribute to the Aurora ecosystem. So the Aurora runs uh, on several devices developed uh, both in Russia and abroad. We have we are serving the needs of client of very high profile clients coming from Russian Post, from Ros Telecom, Russian Railroads, Rosatom, Rosetti. We will even be executing the Russian census uh, this year with the help of uh, devices run on Aurora. Now, thanks to um, local Russian team and the infrastructure partner uh, of Ros Telecom. Aurora is on track to cover a very lucrative corporate and government market. And uh, this year, as I said, we will be executing the census, which is about 400,000 devices. Then we will be rolling out um, to pr propose the devices run on Aurora to um, medical staff and to teachers. And uh, next year, we will be rolling out on a corporate market and uh, on an internal government market. But Aurora is, uh, is not stopping with mobile devices. We are also developing Aurora into all sorts of other niches. So it's rapidly expanding into Internet of Things, into online cash desks, into smartphones, into HMI, uh, some other terminals, what have you. And so we also see that the thinking that we initially had when we decided uh, when we decided to roll out an independent operating mobile system into Russia is well, we're basically we're not alone thinking like that. I see that <clears throat> the prerequisites that were back in 2015 and 16 that basically pushed us into this project are still there. Apple and Android are still limiting access to its services of uh, several countries. Huawei, the giant, giant, giant Chinese company is on the blacklist. And we see that Google is also using its dominant market power in Turkey to issue licenses uh, in this country. So, and we do see that our countries share our, our sentiment. And this is why we are already serving several, several countries uh, and helping them develop their role 
own independent mobile system. We have uh, projects going on in Finland, in Germany, in some other countries in the European Union. We are also having an ongoing project in South Africa and in China. And uh, not just that, we also had a project in Vietnam, which was uh, developed in 2019 and 2020. Basically, we ported Selfish on, on the devices produced by Vinsmart. So the device was Vsmart Joy 3. So the pilot project was executed under the guidance of Science and Technology Ministry of Vietnam. And we executed under strict guidance of uh, Deputy Prime Minister. And uh, we do not want to start, stop there. We would like to further roll out uh, and propose uh, in Vietnam and propose our services to Vietnamese uh, companies. So we do invite Vietnamese producers of uh, operating, um, well, of, uh, of devices and of software for further uh, partnership. Here are my contacts. I would be very happy to discuss any potential partnerships with Vietnam going forward. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. <clears throat> so regarding our schedule, the next speaker will, will be from the Russian side as well. Alexander Kravchenko uh, he is international sales director of Spirit Company. So he will present a video conference call system in general alternative to uh, widely known Zoom. So the system uh, called Video Must. Uh, so please, Alexander, I'm giving you a table. Thank you. Go ahead. Very much. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much, Irina. Uh, good, uh, good afternoon uh, uh, to uh, uh, Vietnam and uh, uh, still good morning uh, uh, to, to Russia. Uh, I'm Alex Kravchenko, uh, and I'm Vice President and International Sales Director of, uh, of the Spirit Company. So let me start sharing my screen. Okay, can you see uh, the sharing? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. okay, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, today uh, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, read uh, uh, deeply and uh, in the details through all, uh, all of my slides. I just want to uh, deliver to you a very simple message uh, based on, uh, on the fact that, look, today we are using Zoom in our meeting, even though uh, 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 and not only for the meeting, but uh, also for the forum, even though it's intergovernmental. Uh, uh, why we are uh, uh, using Zoom? Because uh, a year ago, when the pandemic uh, suddenly uh, hit uh, uh, the world, there was no a single alternative but Zoom for those who had to uh, switch uh, to uh, uh, remote working basically overnight. And it happens in many, many countries uh, all over the world. So the world has seen a dramatic growth in uh, uh, Zoom usage over the first uh, couple of months of pandemic. But now, after uh, a year, with the help of uh, vaccination and other stuff, people started to return back to the offices. And uh, uh, governments and uh, businesses have started to think about a uh, more secured platform and means and tools for the online uh, collaboration and the uh, the communication because uh, today we uh, are also, for example, talking a lot uh, on the forum about uh, uh, security and uh, cyber security and encryption and this and that. And even uh, uh, on our meeting in the left upper corner uh, of the meeting screen, you can see a green shield, which uh, indicates that the, uh, the communication is encrypted, but this is built in encryption. And it's Zoom encryption. 
and we all must uh, understand that uh, Zoom being a global um, uh, uh, cloud service sends all the traffic to their data centers located somewhere in the world, in the US, in China, uh, somewhere else, you never know. Uh, and if you own the service, if you own the data centers, if you own the servers, the hardware, if you own the encryption, believe me, you can do whatever you want with the traffic. And uh, uh, no, uh, 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 there are no tools which uh, will help you to ensure 100% security. And what is much more important, uh, a national digital uh, sovereignty. And uh, 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 what is also uh, important is that uh, during the pandemic year, video conferencing has become a must and uh, uh, one of the most important platform technologies for all the solutions, okay? Now, my message is very simple. There is no uh, more secure or uh, uh, there's no uh, stronger security than physical security. It means that if you own the uh, service, if you own the hardware, this is the highest level of the security which you can uh, achieve. But here is- Alex, the Alex, sorry. Uh, your slides probably doesn't move. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not moving them. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not moving them because sorry, sorry. I'm going to do this in, uh, in a couple of minutes. I just want to okay. deliver a very simple message that uh, uh, here is the problem. No one in the world can uh, own a Zoom server. Uh, Zoom is a cloud service. I mean, you cannot own Zoom. Uh, you cannot own Zoom server. And basically there is no uh, alternative in the world to own a ready to go, uh, completely uh, uh, ready for uh, implementation and deployment video conferencing service like Zoom. There is no such source, but uh, Spirit and our product, which is called VideoMod. Now I'm going to uh, run through the slides very quickly. Uh, just a couple of words about the company. We are 25, uh, more than 25 years in the international software uh, development and licensing business. More than a billion people in uh, uh, some hundred countries are using our software. And today uh, our flagship product is video mode video conferencing and team spirit messaging for the corporate and business usage. Here is a list, uh, well, an extract of uh, our customers who are using our software inside their products. As you can see, it's ranging from uh, uh, Apple uh, to Huawei and to ZTE, to Skype, Viber, and etc. So all these uh, customers are using our software inside their products. And the software is for uh, voice and video communication over IP, okay? Now in Vietnam, we uh, uh, are working uh, uh, since several years. We have got uh, a couple of very prominent uh, uh, the customers and prospects, for example, hospitals of the Vietnam Ministry of Defense are using uh, uh, spirit video conferencing for telemedicine uh, or Ho Chi Minh City uh, People uh, Committee uh, 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 is using video, uh, video most conferencing to conduct their everyday meeting since probably five years already. And they are uh, continuously extending uh, the license and the number of uh, uh, users which are uh, 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 connected to, to uh, the server. And I, uh, uh, what I want to uh, emphasize, all these customers, I mean, uh, Minister of Defense, uh, Ho Chi Minh City, they're hosting their own servers. I mean, they're not using Zoom. 
they are using video modes because there is no, uh, uh, there is nothing stronger than a physical security. When you own, the, own the, what is uh, video modes? Video modes is basically it looks uh, very similar to Zoom. It has all the functionality, all the standard functionality: video conferencing, screen sharing, whiteboarding. Um, uh, the support for uh, uh, different platforms, which you can use to access the, uh, uh, the product. Uh, uh, it has uh, extensive uh, uh, list of wide list of uh, uh, enterprise features, like uh, a support for Linux, for example, or a support for legacy SAP and. Uh, H.323 hardware like uh, Polycom, Cisco, Life Size, whatever, Huawei. Um, uh, and uh, it has, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, read this everything. I will be sending the presentation after the meeting to all the participants. So you can, you can do it yourself. But uh, uh, it has uh, all the enterprise uh, features, all the collaboration tools. Uh, it provides a total interoperability, and what is much more important, it is 100% uh, ready for use. It's 100% made in Russia uh, because we have developed every single piece of the software in-house. We have never licensed or we have uh, uh, never used anything from the third party except of a couple of open source uh, uh, software like, you know, uh, um, SAP signaling server or, or, uh, or the likely stuff. Uh, it, and it means that the product we are as the company and, uh, and the product, we do not depend on anyone. It's 100% our intellectual property, 100% made in Russia, 100% ready uh, to use. And here is our proposal. It's very simple. Uh, we uh, have certain experience of uh, working together with the largest service the providers in Vietnam, like the NPT, Viettel, Mobitel. Uh, and we still propose, I mean, uh, we have got certain customers in, uh, in Vietnam, but we want to expand. So we propose to build self-hosted services, uh, video conferencing and the collaboration services in Vietnam, together with uh, uh, the largest Vietnamese uh, service providers. And then to provide this secure, uh, physically secure services to the local enterprise and governmental customers. Uh, we also proposing a source code license, which you cannot, uh, achieve with Zoom. I mean, you cannot own Zoom server and you absolutely cannot own Zoom source code, but you can do this with Spirit and with video modes. And last but not least, if uh, the collaboration uh, 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 will progress, we can talk about technology transfer, either to uh, Post and Telecommunication Institute of Vietnam or VNT or any other uh, Vietnamese authority which will be interested in it. So uh, this is basically everything what I wanted to deliver today. Come on, thank you very much. Uh, here is my contacts. And as I said, I mean, I will be sending out the, uh, uh, the presentation after the meeting to all the participants. So please feel free uh, to contact me and we will uh, uh, move, I, I strongly believe that we will move together uh, to the uh, 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 independency and uh, national digital uh, sovereignty in uh, the field of online communication and the collaboration together with the Vietnamese partners. So thank you very much once again, come on. Thank you, Alex, for your very nice presentation covering um, important aspects of 
cybersecurity and video conference uh, systems that is very important and crucial nowadays. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead. <clears throat> I will ask my colleagues from Vietnam to uh, make the intro of next speaker from H uh, HMD, Vietnam Digital Technology. So please, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and afternoon to everyone. I'm Jan Ming Hyo, head of IT from ICMD Technology, and I represent the company to welcome all to the presentation of AI Smart Warning. AI Smart Warning is a collaboration product of Nisi Vietnam, HMD Technology, and Nasila Vietnam. AI Smart Warning is a smart alerting system that uses AI technology to detect human actions via surveillance camera and alert to people via alarm, buzzer, or instant messages on your smartphone. The system can detect when someone is falling, fighting, getting drunk, or dangerous weapons or extra restricted area. Some of the models in AI Smart Warning are the situation model with support for cases such as elderly having a stroke or falling from stairs, workers fall in construction, manufacturing, warehouse, or young children fall and play without adult supervision. The facing situation model ensures security and order in buildings, apartment, residential area, in this industrial zone, provide security in prisons, banks, hospitals, and schools. The drunk situation model warns for drunk subjects that are engaged in risky behaviors, for example, fighting, or face dangers due to uncontrolled behaviors, for example, purging into the crowded streets or entering dangerous zones. Dangerous object situation models warns when a suspect carries a dangerous weapon, such as bringing hammer, gun, knife to rob, bring dangerous weapons to organize a fight, bring sticks to destroy security and order. The intruder warning. The intruder situation model warns when intruders entering a restricted area, secure area, penetrating in a dangerous area, throw around the private area with intent to expose and follow up for crime fines fences. One of the core benefits of AI spot learning is that it's almost instantaneous, which saves time and resources and can tackle the situation at end immediately. As a security measure, AI smart warning ensures it is a system with one of the best detection accuracy on the market. AI Smart Winning has been getting a lot of recognition from inside and outside of Vietnam, such as the product has been granted five patients in Japan. Four patients have been submitted to the international level and been registered for copyright and product owners in Vietnam. The team of research 100% from Vietnam. Not only that, AI Smart Winning has been actively participating in digital transformation competitions and won many awards such as Make in Vietnam 2020, Vietnam Digital Awards 2020. Both competitions are organized by the Ministry of Information and Communication in Vietnam. Our relevant contacts are on the slide. You can contact us through calls or emails and the model says, AI Smart Running accompany you to warn of dangerous situations. And we wish to provide a solution for the Russian market. So we want to seek and cooperate with Russian partners who know the domestic market. We also need to seek cooperation with Russian cloud, GPU server infrastructure providers to deliver the solution to the Russian market. And to understand more about our product, 
I would like to invite you to watch the following video. I am smart women is a system developed by the collaboration of history, HMD technology, and Attila Vietnam. I am smart women is built with artificial intelligence and are automatically recognized human action. We have surveillance camera to send to people instant alerts to send real pictures of action at the moment as happening to relevant people. Authority by alarm is building for hospital prisons. We are on smartphones that just telegraph smart warning, fiber, staff, or alerts to the own users' application automatically. Fighting situation, we improve security and order in buildings, banks, hospitals. System will signal to loudspeakers and send a message to the manager to probably intervene and handle the situation. The risk of falling or fainting usually occurs in the elderly. In young children unattended and can also occur in healthy people with stroke. In detecting a fall or fainting situation, I have my will immediately signal to the speaker to ring the bell, type, phone, send a text message, and ask the principal for the time. The situation of suspecting an intruder, intruder or thief, will be assisted by identifying the person climbing the wall, breaking into the restricted area moving or standing still, kicking around the building or building area. And yes, my will will send a message immediately to your phone. Drunk people often have dangerous behavior and can also often endanger themselves due to their uncontrolled behavior. So when the system detects in time, can send an alert to the area management. And it will seem to help drunk people avoid danger in a total prevent dangerous behavior that they can also cause. I have one warning when suspicious objects when they carry dangerous objects such as hammers, guns, knives, sticks. System will assist to identify dangerous objects, signal loudspeakers, send messages to the landlord and online to monitor and probably prevent. AI smart warning is a solution which is completely owned by 100% Vietnamese people in all stages of research, development, construction, and deployment. The AI core technology used in AI smart warning products has been granted five patents in Japan, of which four have been submitted to the international level and have been granted registered for copyright and owner products in Vietnam. In 2020, AI Smart Reading has been honored to receive the Vietnam Digital Award 2020 and you win the first prize of potential digital products that make in Vietnam Award. This is a national award held for the first time to honor digital products designed and created by Vietnamese people and Vietnamese enterprise in Vietnam. Smart warning accompany you to warn dangerous situations. Uh, that, that is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's really impressive. Uh, thank you. I hope you will find a partner from the Russian side since Russian. Uh, Russian colleagues focusing on video analytics as well. So we do have uh, several projects uh, in Southeast Asia, not just in Vietnam, but in Malaysia and Indonesia. So in terms of uh, face recognition, like behavior recognition as you do, uh, like public safety. So yeah, it's pretty, uh, 
pretty uh, actual and pretty, I guess, pretty interesting area to uh, develop. Like, uh, and good luck. Thank you. So, yeah, it's pretty impressive for me. Um, so I will contact you after the presentation session. Thank you. Uh, let's go. Let's go. And uh, please, next speaker. Company called Irkus, Russian company. Uh, I will give the like a table to director for foreign economic, economic affairs. His name is Yuri, like Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Rimbovsky, he will present solution of company uh, for automated spectrum monitoring information security. Please, Yuri, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, okay. Just it's your time. Know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, good morning, dear participants. My name is Yuri Rimbowski. I am director of foreign sales and marketing uh, of Coast Johnston Company. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for this opportunity to represent our company and our solutions. Uh, this slide presents uh, main uh, facts uh, about IRCOS. IRCOS is a private and independent company. It's established in 1992. Uh, this year, we are going uh, to celebrate our 29th anniversary. Uh, the company employs about 200 high skilled specialists. Uh, the head uh, office is located in Moscow. Um, the main uh, field um, of her course business are engineering design and manufacturing of hardware software solutions for spectrum monitoring and information security. Um, here you can see the list uh, and pictures of uh, products. Uh, the main purpose of our products is to explore uh, radio frequency spectrum to detect active uh, radio signals and uh, to localize their sources. <clears throat> this quite basic functions may be very useful in wide variety of applications. Uh, next slide shows list of our customers as well as uh, geography of our clients. Among them, there are both governmental and large private companies, including uh, supervisory uh, services for radio frequency spectrum utilizations, uh, telecommunications company, banks, large industry enterprises, uh, security departments and governmental, of governmental and commercial organizations, police, army, anti-drugs, and counter-terrorism authorities. Our products uh, were delivered to countries with very different climatic conditions, and everywhere they demonstrated reliable operation. Uh, here you can see application of for our products. Uh, they are um, spectrum monitoring, detection of uh, radio frequency sources, search and rescue operation, uh, border protection, coast guarding, uh, prevention of terrorism and organized crime. Um, let's consider these applications. Uh, I'd like to start with automatic spectrum monitoring. Uh, radio frequency spectrum is a natural resource and this resource is limited. Uh, distribution and monitoring of use of this limited natural resource is an important national task. The most effective uh, solution uh, of this problem requires system approach to spectrum monitoring. Solving this task on national level requires developing distributed automated spectrum monitoring system, which unites uh, separated technical means of spectrum monitoring into united network <coughs> and allows centralization of spectrum monitoring. Uh, such a system was designed by our company. This is Armada Automated Spectrum Monitoring System. The whole system uh, is a combination of three main components. The first one is a high quality hardware part 
which provides for reliable receipt of radio signals. The second component is uh, advanced algorithm of digital signal processing. And the final one is automated uh, management of distributed system based on modern IT technologies. Uh, spectrum monitoring equipment used in the automated system includes fixed measuring station, mobile measuring station, transportable stations, uh, when pack and health direction finders, measuring radio receivers. Um, of course, uh, manufacturers all uh, technical means mentioned above and can supply them an amount required for spectrum monitoring uh, on any required level. Uh, spectrum uh, monitoring equipment of course uh, has high technical parameters and wide functionality. It's uh, designed based on recommendation of uh, International Telecommunication Unit. Um, at the uh, time, about uh, 200 mobile and fixed stations of spectrum monitoring and direction finding manufactured by IRCOS are used by radio frequency service of the Russian Federation. Uh, these stations are uh, distributed around the whole territory of the Russian Federation from, from uh, far north to subtropics. They um, successfully operate in very different climatic conditions. We would be glad if our technical solutions would find demand in your country. Um, another problem which can be solved with our products is uh, border protection and uh, coast guarding. Um, continuous uh, radio monitoring near the state borders and near coastline is a powerful tool to detect potential threats uh, caused by separated intruders as well as by organized groups. Uh, detection and localization of emission sources near the state borders helps in preventing the intrusion. Um, in the field of information security, IRCOS uh, proposes complex protection of specially import, uh, important uh, facilities, which includes revealing of illegal data transmission via radio channels and localization of radio emission sources inside especially protected objects and transport means. Uh, contra measures to radio surveillance or industrial espionage by monitoring of uh, emission level along the perimeter of a special protected area. Uh, detection and localization of radio controlled unmanned aircrafts or drones uh, performing uh, illegal uh, video recording. Uh, IRCOS also provides uh, powerful tools uh, to detect uh, signals of rescue buoys and uh, to localize them. Uh, for example, IRCOS equipment was successfully used by, uh, for search and localization of descent capsula of spacecrafts. Here on the picture, you can see uh, the off-road uh, vehicle uh, with our equipment installed and spaceman successfully locate, located with it. Um, radio monitoring equipment is also quite a natural tool to detect and localize another dangerous class of uh, emitters, the interference sources. Uninterrupted operation of modern infrastructure objects is inconvincible uh, without a uh, wireless communication system. Interference to wireless communication system creates essential threats. Sometimes uh, interference of unauthorized uh, radio emissions can even lead to, to dramatic disaster, for example, in case of airports. Of course, uh, provides solution for localization of interference sources which help preventing such threats. Um, that's about all I want to tell about our products. Um, this slide uh, presents uh, my contact data. Uh, you can write, uh, you can connect, uh, contact me later. I would be glad to answer any questions. Uh, thank you for uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Um, we have 
three more speakers left. So three more presentations. Let's go ahead. I would like to give a word to uh, Evgeny Baranov, company T8. So he will present us their DVDM, DWDM equipment. And uh, Eugen, Evgeny, if you have yes, I'm here. seven minutes, please start. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Runat, uh, can I share the screen? You Which probably can do it. So let me see. Um, try. No. No. All right. Strange. Just give me a sec. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Asking my colleagues, like admin colleagues, to give you permission to make a presentation. Um, Thank you. Something with the presentation is not clear. Uh, Evgeny, you still can do this? Yes, still can do this. Very strange. Организатор отключил демонстрацию экрана, вот что у меня, собственно, находится. Сейчас. А можете мне презентацию скинуть? Я сейчас попробую себе сделать. Странно очень, конечно. Как я скину? А, а можно в чатик? Файл приложить. Сделаем. Just give us like a one minute. We're trying to manage the like a presentation mode. Жень, у меня тут коллеги пишут, что все вроде должно быть нормально, но сейчас я попробую. Сам запустить. Так, секунду. Сейчас. Презентация же не менялась с момента вот последнего, когда там ее Леша готовил. Нет, поменялось. Поменялось, тогда лучше скинуть. Thank you. 
или в Telegram. Я сейчас скину. Скидываю в чат. Угу, угу. Все получилось. Окей. Okay. Um, can you see the screen? Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. You see the screen. All right. Right. So will be the thing. presentation presenter. So verbally, it will be presented by Evgeny. Evgeny. So, okay, please. Yeah. Um, my apologies is about technical issues for the presentation. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, my name is Evgeny and I'm uh, representing T8 company. Uh, next slide, please, Renas. Sure. Uh, the subject of my presentation is about the importance of uh, having uh, local te telecommunication equipment. And first of all, I would like to uh, tell a few words about our company. Uh, T8 um, has been founded in 2004, and uh, we are producing the WDM equipment, that's the transmission equipment to transmit the data over the optical networks. Um, so we have an R&D center, we have a lab, we have a production site, we are based in Moscow, and we are successfully producing our equipment. And uh, actually at this market, we have a tough competition. We are competing with such a big companies like Huawei or Nokia. Uh, and uh, we already reached uh, the market share slightly more than 10%. Uh, in Russia, what is really good, and we are growing year to year. So, uh, saying about uh, uh, the importance of the uh, localization of the hardware, uh, I would like to say about our differentiator. So, we are not only uh, distributing the hardware, but we are open to help. Uh, to other countries uh, to organize the localization of the hardware with uh, technology transfer. And that uh, will help to build the uh, full production uh, cycle with the full control of the production. Um, next slide, please. Just a bit, yeah, this one, yeah, thank you. Just a bit deeply understand what we do. Uh, our portfolio is based on the three main blocks. So first one is the tele telecommunication block and here we have DWDM equipment and we have the open code platform based on FPGA. Uh, the second block is the optoelectronic components which we're distributing and which we use as well for assembly or equipment. The third block is dedicated for the monitoring purposes. Uh, this is the distributed acoustic sensor um, and it is uh, monitoring over the optical networks, the perimeter, long perimeters starting from 70 kilometers. Uh, next one, please. Our flagship product is the uh, multi service platform. Uh, this is basically chassis with the uh, different sizes. And you can equip it with different kind of models. Actually, we have more than different 
more than 70 different blocks. Uh, there are transponders, moxponders, amplifiers of the different uh, types. And actually there is uh, now everything what any big operator or internet service provider might need in order to build a high bandwidth optical network. So the, um, uh, now the previous one, please. Uh, so current bandwidth of our transponder is 600 gigabit per second, and we are about to complete the testing of the 800 gigabit per second transponder. <clears throat> okay. The next one, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go deeply in the technical details of our equipment, but it's important to notice that uh, to our customers, we are able to provide the solutions uh, for, let's say, standard uh, things like a backbone networks, for metro networks, uh, for data centers. Uh, we also support the LN wavelength solution, LN wavelength technology, which is allowing uh, to our customer save a lot of cost uh, when they need the upgrade. And we also uh, uh, may provide you with the equipment for the 5G. Uh, here it's important to notice that all kind of that solutions are implementing on the critical telecommunication infrastructure. And same critical uh, infrastructure, I mean the optical channels, channels over which we transmit the sensitive data or optical channels which are connecting uh, the very important government sections, se sectors or objects. And uh, again, it's important to notice here that uh, in any country, everyone is caring about what is installed in the network and how we control our network and how we trust to our equipment, right? Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. And especially in 5G, um, you can notice yeah, that 95% of the way the 5G signal goes over optical fiber channel. And in 5G, uh, we are going to uh, allow the connectivity and control to such a critical things like uh, IoT devices. So IoT devices uh, might be used for home, for kitchen, uh, the small ones, or it can, it, it can, it can be uh, the huge uh, vehicles or autonomous cars, autonom autonomous taxi. And of course, uh, every country should care about what kind of connectivity we provide and what, how we secure that connectivity to such a critical objects. Uh, and this is another fact and another, let's say, um, big area that uh, every country now is trying to deploy and should care about the security and trust to the hardware which is installed on that critical uh, telecommunication infrastructure. Uh, next, next slide, please. Um, another story uh, uh, about this, uh, within this subject is the experience that we had in 2014 uh, that was uh, the preparation to the Olympic games um, uh, at this time, we had uh, the opportunity to provide uh, the backup line to uh, regional connectivity to the region uh, where uh, the Olympics games uh, happened. And the main regional connectivity was done on the foreign equipment. So, and uh, the thing happened like that the main uh, line was attacked from abroad and completely stopped 
uh, the equipment was completely stopped and T8 equipment managed to take the full uh, data transmission on it and successfully uh, got to live the original connectivity. From that moment, um, let's say uh, everyone understood uh, that uh, we should care about what is installed on the network and we should secure our network and especially on the critical objects, provide uh, the local equipment uh, to which we trust. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, and here is the slide uh, on which I want to, uh, let's say, demonstrate what happened on the telecommunication area within previous couple of years. Uh, so you might notice that in the USA, uh, the Huawei MCT equipment was completely banned. Uh, UK uh, implemented significant restrictions uh, where the market share of the Huawei was limited by 35%. Uh, Europe goes on the same way and implemented uh, significant restrictions for Huawei. And it's not something to say against of some vendors like Huawei or other. It's just to demonstrate that the countries are changing the way they are thinking about the uh, about the security of their communication channels and about the uh, security of uh, the uh, equipment that are, they are deploying on, the, on their critical uh, telco infrastructure. So, <clears throat> uh, next one, please. Yeah, sorry, a uh, previous one, sorry. Yeah, and uh, this slide is demonstrating that uh, the mind of the countries uh, in this manner is changed and everyone is caring about uh, to trust to the hardware that is installed on the network. And here I would like to get back, get back again to our differentiators to say that we are not only ready to distribute our uh, DWDM equipment, but we are ready to uh, help with localization of our equipment with technology transfer. Like this, you will get the control of the full cycle of the production and uh, you will have your local uh, trusted equipment. Uh, and the final slide, uh, the next one, please. Just to complete on the telecommunication block, that's another uh, platform that we are producing. Uh, this is open code platform based on FPGA. Uh, that actually, this is a kind of equipment on which you can uh, deploy your own encryption algorithm and secure your communication channel. This is the uh, instrument for developers. And actually you can uh, use it for any kind of uh, technology to put on top of that equipment and run, uh, let's say, uh, uh, data over optical uh, channels. So this solution have no back doors, no second keys, thanks to the FPGA. Yeah. Um, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Here are my contacts and I will be happy to, to tell you more and to discuss the collaboration. Thank you, Evgeny. Uh, yeah, short note, actually, uh, all presentation will be found on the website. You know, website, I will send you soon the link. So you will be able to find all presentation from Russian and Vietnamese side there. Uh, okay, we have two more speakers left. I would like to give table to Andre uh, Kuchirava. He is the head of 
the Department of Communication Networks and Data Transmission from St. Petersburg, from St. Petersburg State University of Telecommunications. Uh, Andrew. Thank you very much, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I will try to. Yeah. Please, your presentation. Yeah. Yeah. In my presentation? Yes. Yes, okay. Sure. Uh, thank sure. you very much. My name is Andrei Kucherev. I'm from St. Petersburg State University of Telecommunication. And uh, to my co author, one co author, Alexei Borodin, and the second co author, Natalia Chispo, Alexei Borodin from uh, Public uh, Joint Stock Venture of Telecom, Natalia Chispo from uh, my university. Content of presentation. Some was about global changes in communication networks. After that, we um, will see differences between uh, sixth generation network and five generation network, and between the uh, global uh, concept of uh, network uh, 2030 and uh, sixth generation network. Afterward, we can form the decade goal, uh, going to cross-sectoral significance and bridging the digital divide between territories. And uh, the uh, last uh, sentences is about decentralization of the network. This is the most important part of my presentation, decentralization of the network. And afterward, some conclusion. So, Network evolution, what we can see today. Today we can see uh, for medium term planning communication network of the fifth generation. It's from 2020, it's uh, now our reality. For long term planning, we can see uh, gold decades uh, communication network 2030. What is the difference between uh, all this concept? First of all, I say somewhat about uh, Communication Network 2030. This is concept of uh, international communication union and uh, support uh, by some uh, scientists uh, and uh, uh, vendors uh, all over the world. First of all, this is an ultra dense network. Up to 1 million devices per square kilometer and up to 100 devices per cubic meter. The second, ultra low latency network, less than one millisecond. This is the most important new requirements, which in my opinion, uh, should uh, change the network in a, as a whole. Uh, furthermore, ultra high reliable network availability can be 0 0.69 after Point and uh, the uh, last uh, uh, requirement network availability four milliseconds per day. Uh, oh, sorry, to, uh, I, I see uh, the mistake four milliseconds per, per hour. And it's another, uh, which is uh, the most important uh, requirements. Differences between six generation from five generation, we know that super density. Uh, 100 device per cubic meter, radio access delay uh, 1 point, uh, uh, 0 0.1 millisecond for radio access only. And peak rate, uh, we're going to terabyte per second. One more parameter for networks is purchase warning. The 5G, the 6G, 6G and uh, Network 2030 have a good possibility for positioning. It's needed because uh, some uh, connection will be constrained uh, by D2D communication. And high reliability, it's from uh, Leponin, uh, Latva, Aha, key drivers and so on from um, the Finnish uh, uh, center of uh, 6G. Next, new technologies, artificial intelligence, it's uh, understandable, terahertz range, edge computing, integration of perception, video, and high position security, start of implementation of concept industry 4.0, and integration of ground and flying network segments. All of these uh, possibilities are uh, uh, well known uh, as the uh, concept uh, possibilities, but some uh, 
And you, we can see, for example, integration of ground and flying segment, uh, flying network segments. Why we can see further. Next slide, uh, difference of 2030 and sixth generation. We talked about this difference previously, only the peak speed is more than one terabyte and more and more principle with a difference, functional difference between 2030 and uh, six uh, generation network. First time we think about personalization of the network. One of the most promising application for network 2030 will be widespread use and distribution of avatars. Yes, avatars to reproduce the uh, new uh, cup of uh, services, telepresence services. So next slide. Of course, uh, in 2030, we think about uh, nano networks, we think about full-fledged implementation industry uh, 4.0, and uh, about human holographic copies, uh, 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 this is uh, very good connected with uh, avatars. So the cut goal of this uh, of uh, a network growth is the next communication network 2030 will be ultra dense, ultra reliable, with ultra low latency, personalized for telepresence, with the integration of a ground and flight segments operating at low altitudes because we need to support network latency around one millisecond. So for satellite communication, we need at a little segment. Flying segment operated at low altitude for supporting uh, one millisecond. Now, interactions with nano world uh, fully implemented uh, for zero and so on. Most important, I say one more time, but what most important is ultra low delay. Uh, about the uh, significance of all technology, 5G technology, which is a big step to future, but it's only mainly te telecommunication. When we think about uh, sixth generation and 2030, 2030 networks, this is the cross-industry technology. This is the base of effective create and develop the digital economy. Ultra low delays due to fundamental restriction of the speed of propagation of light lead to the centralization of the network. And create preconditions for the centralization of the economy. Is it good or bad? Very good. This is real highway to with this real highway to a less uh, digital divide between territories so uh, we uh, made one uh, uh, investigations and uh, determined that russia federation will need for these networks at least six, 9,000 data processing tensors, which installed including in district centers. This is a new call for us for network uh, structure. Why? No, for example, I see one more time, one millisecond. One millisecond. If we uh, calculate the radius of the circle, where tactile internet services, where ultra low uh, latency services can be uh, support, supporting, it will be radius 50 kilometers only. So, network structure. So, this is a example of network structure. It's need, of course, clusterization. We can see here the example 
of the centralization network for Leningrad region. The red point, which is the location of uh, data centers, the blue point with this point of generated tra traffic. We see, we can see here example of the centralized network. Maybe we use two ubiquitous, uh, two uh, ultra reliable and low latency networks. Not only tactile internet where we uh, uh, request uh, uh, around one millisecond. For example, uh, uh, Edgement reality. The requ requirement uh, too strong too, which is the five milliseconds only. So we can see the way structure which is an our structure with uh, today network. For our life, we've uh, uh, requested value of uh, latency for both services, which in our opinion will be one of the best services for Digital economy on the next decade, over this decade. This is uh, tactile internet for robotics and so on. And this is uh, the argument reality for education, for people and so on. So I would like uh, to say some conclusions about fifth generation. The creation of your generation communication network is the first step towards a fundamental modernization of communication network towards the emergence of ultra highly reliable network with ultra low delays. Next. Thick generation. Thick generation, it will be a very good technology, but in my opinion, this is the Pre step be, 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 before uh, network 2030. And of course, the global goal or the coming decade is to create 2030 networks that will be fully decentralized, ultra dense, ultra reliable, with ultra low latency, personalized for telepresence, with the integration of ground and flying segments, operating at low altitudes, interacting with nano wall and also fully implementing the concept of industry 4.0 and providing native service to humanoid robots in manufacturing. What is uh, for society as a whole? With networks should effectively reduce the digital divide between territories. This is one of the important tasks of uh, digital economy as well as effective counter pandemic light phenomena through telepresence services. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Um, Maybe we are going to the last. Yeah, the last the speaker. Best. Uh, Alessandro Yartsova, Chief Marketing Officer, Company NFBR. Hello. Hi, Alexandra. Uh, yes, please. Go ahead. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us to, to talk to this, uh, this conference. My name is Alexandra and I work for NFWare. Um, uh, to start, I wanted to, um, I wanted you to think about the traffic that we have today and we have in the future. The previous speaker told that Vietnam today have four terabits per second of traffic domestic. And I believe it was 13 uh, gigabits, uh, terabits per second internationally. So uh, 
we need to assume that this traffic with the upcoming technology like 5G and connected cars and the Internet of Things and other exciting technology that we discussed today, with that tech, this traffic will be fivefold and five times bigger than we have today. So telecom operators uh, will need to be able to handle all those traffic on this infrastructure. And the way how it was traditionally built uh, is not right for this. So we need to enable a new approach to build uh, infrastructure so it can be um, cost efficient and flexible in order to be able to go with, it, with the future traffic. So I'm honored to introduce you NFWare, uh, which is the world's fastest virtualization technology. Uh, we developed it to make the networks and infrastructure flexible, reliable, and efficient. Uh, our software and our products works on top of standard servers in virtualized and cloud environment and process up to 10 times more data and more traffic than alternative solution existing today. So our technology is high performance and flexible. Uh, I wanted to talk uh, what does it really mean for operators and how you can see this as a benefit. So first of all, um, uh, the high performance is important because high performance networking solutions uses, use less uh, hardware resources and has a better hardware utilization. On this slide, uh, you can see the comparison of the performance of our current solutions with real companies, uh, the well-known companies, the leading companies of the world. So if you see uh, the performance of the virtual solutions, um, it's not yet on the level of hardware analogs. So NFWare uh, developed a product that can process up to 240 gigabits per RAM server. That means that you can use up to three times less hardware, less servers to process large amount of traffic on the, uh, on the telecom operators data centers. And the second thing is uh, with the virtualization technology and the software, um, the networks become scalable. So um, operators now can scale uh, the network capacity in line with the traffic growth and in line with the demands. Um, it can be phase your go model and it avoids operators from over provisioning the network capacity and overpaying for resources that they don't actually um, use. So um, what did we do and how did we achieve this, uh, um, this high performance and flexible solution? How did we make it? So the core technology is uh, what we call NFWare multi-core stack. It is a patent uh, technology uh, for, that allows us to make a fast packet processing and smart hardware utilization. Uh, actually, the, the software and the fundamental architecture allows us to use the maximum of the hardware resources and, um, and process more traffic on the same server, on the same uh, hardware unit. So based on that technology, we developed two products uh, so far. This is uh, commercially proven solutions. The first one is virtual carrier grid NAT um, with firewall functionality. Carrier grid NAT is a solution for telecom operators and for service providers uh, that allows to solve the issue of IPv4 addresses exhaustion. So it allows to translate IP addresses uh, for subscribers in a, an efficient and a fast manner. And the second uh, product is virtual load balancer, which uh, helps companies to reduce um, uh, to reduce loads on the data center by efficiently balancing the traffic between different servers and the data center. So both products are, um, are developed uh, based on the uh, fast packet processing algorithm. And uh, because of that, uh, the technology and the company was uh, recognized by several analytical agencies and uh, several awards as a leading NFV vendor, virtualization vendor in the field. Uh, but the most uh, important um, recognition is uh, from the customer projects. Uh, so we have a customer footprint in the US, Europe, uh, 
Russia and Central Asia. Uh, we work with the service providers, um, uh, large and small companies, uh, and uh, help them to build uh, efficient networks. So the biggest customer uh, has deployed NFware for 3.8 terabits uh, per second. And we also have um, middle-sized and uh, small-sized operators from all over the world who use uh, the NFware solution. So just top three use cases uh, that we see in the market, why companies and people choose NFware for their networks, uh, which might be useful for our Vietnam um, our partners for consideration. So first one is the high throughput and how loaded projects. So if the network requires um, um, huge network capacity, NFware can provide a better hardware utilization and better cost efficiency for this project because we can process large amount of traffic just on simple x86 servers. The second use case is the fast growing companies. And we work with the you know, fast growing projects that fast growing companies who build their businesses from a little size to a bigger, um, bigger customers, bigger projects, bigger uh, traffic that they, uh, that they handle. And in that case, um, with the software and with the NFware, uh, it can be gradually scaling uh, network in line with the business needs, in line with the network needs. And the third case is distributed network. So uh, in the 5G, network function virtualization is a standard and um, uh, companies uh, deployed virtualized solutions. And uh, because we work in a unified hardware and it can be basically a server with a, like different configuration, it is possible to deploy NFware on different um, sites and locations and to make the network distributed or centralized and to be ready for 5G um, IoT and the digital um, transformation world. So this is all from me. Um, I uh, just wanted to say that we would be happy to work with the Vietnam companies and to work with them on the projects where the networks can be more efficient and reliable ready for 5G and the future of the digital world. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alessandra. Uh, yeah, see you at tomorrow's event. Thank you for your clear and structured presentation. Very nice. Uh, thank you everyone for participating and joining us today. So like a short closing remarks, all presentation uh, will be found on our website. You can find the link below in the uh, group chat. I've sent it several minutes ago. Uh, we uh, will, uh, yeah. I think yeah, by I our think. schedule, we have uh, one more presentation. Really? Director of International Training Center. Oh, uh, maybe so we miss uh, him. All right, sure. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yes. we do have. We do Please, have. Mr. Wang Qi. Okay. Please. Hey, Hank, what are you doing? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Please. Uh, Hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, I will go very fast. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Anton. So I go very fast because uh, I'm from a university. So I will uh, present some uh, uh, something about uh, uh, the the only one university in the Ministry of uh, Information and Communication of Vietnam. So the um, we are a higher higher education institution, uh, namely Post and Telecommunication Institute of Technology. Uh, but the, 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 the form is, uh, we are in the public university uh, under the supervision of the Ministry of uh, Information and uh, Communication. So the mission is uh, of our university is, is um, 
to innovate transfer knowledge by integrating uh, education training, research activities, and uh, technology transfer in the field of ICT, uh, aiming at um, the development and advance of the society. So, to do that, uh, in uh, uh, this um, the abbreviation of our university is PTIT. So we have the headquarter in Hanoi. Uh, and another branch in uh, another campus in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. So also we also have the training center. Uh, before uh, we are belong to the VNPT, but now we are under the v uh, uh, Ministry of Information and Communication. So we have the uh, quite uh, two uh, uh, training center. We call PT uh, TC one in Hanoi and uh, another one in Ho Chi Minh City. We have a center for international education. Uh, to support for uh, education and training for research and development. So we also have some uh, institutes like um, a research institute in post and, uh, uh, and telecommunication uh, uh, and also the economic research institute of uh, post and telecommunication. We also have the, uh, the one institute uh, focusing on uh, IT. So in, 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 in terms of numbers, so we have uh, more than 50,000 students and uh, undergrad student, and we uh, also the 3,000 uh, postgraduate students, including the master student and PhD student. So we have a uh, focus on uh, training and research on 11 majors, but we are strong at uh, IT, like computer science, software engineering, information systems, information security, and also cyber security and computer security. Uh, so we also very strong at uh, telecommunication and electronic engineering, uh, information security, electronics, uh, uh, electrical engineering. So that the uh, the, uh, the, the the strong uh, aspects of the uh, the PTIT. So we also for life for the IT. So we have uh, very specialized uh, training program like software engineering, computer engineering information system, computer science, including the AR and data analytics, and also network security. So for uh, telecommunication, we also focus on wireless mobile communication, uh, telecommunication and uh, service, uh, and also digital communications. Uh, for electronic engineering, so we focus on uh, uh, some uh, very uh, specific team of the electronic and computer engineering and digital signal, uh, digital signal processing and communication. So that is the, the some uh, pro, uh, some strong uh, training program that we are offering. Uh, and uh, we also have quite diversity in uh, in some of the uh, uh, training. So we also offer the soft training uh, program to upskill uh, for the uh, people working in the field. Like in uh, and you, you uh, many different uh, ways to do that face to face e learning, video conferencing, and so, uh, of course, uh, all of this you can't call blended learning. For the IT, we are also doing some uh, outsourcing project, consulting project, development, and customize the solution. And we also have to, to do the techno uh, technology transfer. Uh, in telecommunication, uh, in terms of research and development, we also offering the consulting service, development, customize the solution, and also testing the uh, the solution and devices. And um, for R and D, uh, we are most project uh, we are also constructed by enterprise, and uh, a lot of um, quite the, the the huge amounts of the research result in. Uh, uh, in our uh, PTIT is normally in computer network, telecom, uh, telcos, and recently IT become the very strong aspect of, uh, of our um, university. We offer the, we not only um, providing human resources, but also the solution uh, like AI solution data and also information security solution for the enterprise or for, for organization. Uh, for doing that, so we accept some, uh, and we also receive some 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 donors or uh, uh, like we have town. We also receive uh, this uh, research lab, a four G research lab from Vietnam, one of the very big company or uh, telecommunication company in in, in Vietnam. Uh, we also have set up the the program with like Samsung. Samsung is a. Uh, uh, a big company about uh, the uh, electronic device. Uh, like, uh, then we have 
uh, a set design program uh, with with them uh, to uh, provide information uh, the uh, human resource and also for uh, substitution uh, they order and uh, with Motorola we also work in, with with uh, advanced ICT R D program and then the result is really um, uh, um, good uh, for 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 uh, our collaboration. And we also working with the Indian uh, uh, government to set up the advanced IT training center in Ho Chi Minh City. So this is also uh, uh, started uh, from the last year. Uh, with other projects, the support for training. So we also working with the European partners. Uh, I, I hope that uh, we also work together. Some, uh, but in this section is mostly mostly uh, is about solution and the company and. Uh, this is, I go first, and I go to the, the uh, some proposal uh, for collaboration. So for for Andy, so um, we uh, uh, listen into um, a very uh, interesting um, solution uh, that you are pro uh, presented already. So we are really really welcome you to. Uh, our university for uh, not only in research but also for the training uh, program. Uh, of course, the outreach activity and tech transfer, we are also uh, uh, ready and uh, uh, really welcome you to, to work with us to find the market also for the part, uh, the, 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 uh, the customer uh, to, uh, to, to have the um, uh, some some practical project with, with that. So that is the, the two things I, I think is we uh, uh, really uh, want to work with you at the company and, and, and enterprise uh, to at least uh, to increase the practical knowledge of our uh, students, also our teachers, lecturers, uh, and integrate it into our uh, training program. Uh, and in terms of education, if you can uh, through you if you can work with uh, some university and to design uh, some 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 uh, uh, upskill uh, training program to support for your uh, company in Vietnam, for example. So we are welcome to do that. Uh, so that's all for from uh, uh, PTIT in terms of the offering uh, the opportunity that we can work together to uh, for cooperation in research, in tech transfer or in uh, education training. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for your other view. It was interesting. So I had, I didn't know about this institution. So I will take into consideration. So yeah, it's potentially interesting to have some kind of common research and development. Um, thank you. Uh, so we can like a wrap up, I guess. Uh, thanks again for everyone for joining and participating. So as I mentioned before, you can find a presentation on our website. Uh, and we will upload you. We will upload this like a recording of a Zoom uh, session to our YouTube channel, and the link will be found on the website as well. Uh, thanks again for uh, helping me helping my Vietnamese colleague to make this session and see you soon again. Hope we will have a good collaboration together. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. Yeah. From uh, our side, we'll try to say uh, some, uh, I can say, it's a very interesting information we've got from you. You hear me because uh, I I heard the, the echo from. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, is yeah, it okay? We can hear you. Okay. Is it exactly? Is a very interesting information, and uh, I think uh, in many few we will have a cooperation between the.
Vietnam and uh, all the uh, Vietnamese community and the uh, Muslim community. Oh, and the private sector uh, network for some kind of infrastructure, business infrastructure in the future. So, and uh, I do hope that uh, after the, uh, our meeting today, we will have uh, Address telephone and talk uh, point, and so we can uh, share with our operator, our team who is interested in the uh, so proposal of product. So that's all. Exactly, I uh, I finished uh, education in Russia in the uh, education field, and so okay, I can speak uh, Russian. And, uh, Better you, than you can speak English. Russian. Yes, I uh, finished uh, M2C in uh, 1991. So, if you uh, some proposal you could, you could uh, share in uh, Russian, if you have uh, some kind of uh, the exactly information you want to deliver it to Vietnamese. <laughs> And uh, one more uh, is a question for me because uh, we are from uh, BNTI, uh, the Authority of uh, Regulation mm -hmm. on Telecommunication Sector. And so we try to uh, get uh, more information concerning with your program, uh, digital transformation program uh, in Russia. Understand you, you you have uh, some such kind of program and how is success, successful your program now and uh, some some inf information or experiences you to share with us and I think I can I could write uh, by email to you and uh, and so and get more information. Yeah, you can. I mean, I do have some several useful, potentially useful information for you that I can share with you. So please just email me. You can find the. You can find my email in the chat below. Uh, yeah, in terms of regulation, in terms of some uh, stories we do have here in Russia, so. Probably me and my colleagues from Ministry of uh, Digital Development of Russian Communication, we can share some information. So just like uh, send me questions, send me a demand for your information, probably you need it. Yes, thank you. And uh, concerning the, with uh, how I can say technological uh, transfer from uh, Russian side, Vietnamese side, maybe uh, I I see the two university here, and so maybe it's like uh, we have a contact and uh, have a program on cooperation in the future. I think sure. that is a good sure. way to. Yeah, uh, today's session is just like an intro. Uh, this is the top of the iceberg, so yeah, for sure we have more. Some more potentially common uh, initiatives we can like uh, start, and we do have more Russian companies that for sure will be interested in the Vietnamese market, as well as you have some Vietnamese company as HMD, who is doing some nice things that might be potentially uh, have some collaboration with the Russian partners. So, yeah. It's uh, this kind of session is just like uh, short bridges. We like uh, we will do uh, permanently, I guess, for give opportunity of uh, for give opportunity not to forget each other and like uh, present some. <laughs> okay. You know, because uh, uh, we, we have many things to share. 
I understand you have a uh, restriction or regulation on the satellite services, satellite. especially uh, foreign uh, satellite services in Russia. Satellite so, services. Um, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes. okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, maybe I speak Russian. Спасибо за всего вы. Вы дали нам очень полезные информации, поэтому я думаю, что когда-нибудь мы встречаемся, поговорим, и а что надо, там вам вы напишите, да? По-русски, по-английски для меня все равно. Я говорю по-русски лучше, чем английский. Ваш русский лучше, чем мой Спасибо. русский, я сказал бы. Спасибо большое. Спасибо большое. Да, спасибо, господин Тен. Спасибо, коллеги. Thanks. Come on. My Vietnamese is Alex. So, see you soon again. Thanks again for participating and joining today. So, let's wrap up this session and see you soon. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.